Hey guys, welcome back to another Rock the JVM video. I'm Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to create your own custom string interpolator in Scala. Now, this video will be a little bit more advanced, so this will be for advanced programmers. However, I will not require you to be a absolute guru. I will only require you to know how implicit classes work. As usual, I will recommend that you follow alongside me with the code, and whenever you need to refer to string interpolation or how to create your own custom interpolator, just refer back to this video. Now, uh, this video is also, for your convenience, available in written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog, with a link attached in the description to this video. Now, let me show you what this is about. So in this video, I'm going to show you a less known customizable part of Scala that will allow you to build very powerful tools that will seem to be part of the language itself. So this video is for more intermediate to advanced programmers. Now, you're surely well aware of the Scala string interpolators, the standard ones. They allow us to inject values and even whole expressions into a string. And the best known and most used interpolator is the S interpolator, which simply expands uh, values and expressions inside a string. Let me give an example. So if I declare a value like life of pi as, uh, and let me give the value of pi an approximation, I don't want to compile. So 3.141592926, whatever. So I'm just going to resort to a couple of decimals here. If I wanted to inject life of pi, and if I wanted to divide it by two inside a string, I would do something like this. I would call s interpolator as s quote, and I would start writing a string like the value of pi is, and I would put a dollar sign, and I would say life of pi, and uh, this is how I would inject the value 3.14159 here inside the string, and uh, the half of pi is, and I would put a dollar, and then I would open and close some curly braces, and whenever you do that, you can write any expression that you like. For example, I can say life of pi divided by two, and the value of this expression will automatically be injected into this string. So if I define a main method and I would print s interpolator, then uh, I would see something like the value of pi is 3.14159 and the half of pi is that number divided by 2. So this is pretty straightforward and I'm pretty sure you've seen this before. Then we have the so-called raw interpolator, which looks something like this. I'm going to say raw interpolator as raw quote in much the same style as I said earlier with s quote, and I'm going to copy this because the raw interpolator works in the exact same way as the s interpolator, except the escape characters are not escaped. So if I said backslash n, then this will not be a new line. It will be treated literally. So this is not a new line. And if I print this out in main, like raw interpolator, then I would see uh, the uh, value of pi is life of pi, so 3.159 whatever, and the backslash n is treated literally. If I put backslash n inside the s interpolator, then that will trigger a new line, which is not the case with a raw interpolator. The raw interpolator is less used, and it's specifically used for this specific, this specific case with uh, non-escaped characters. And then we have the f interpolator, which is more complex. So um, this f interpolator... has the ability to control the format in which values are shown in a very similar way to printf. Let me give an example. I'm going to say f interpolator as f quote. And I'm going to say the value or the approximate value of pi is, and I'm going to inject life of pi, and then I'm going to put a percent here, percent 4.2f. Percent 4.2f means write this number with at most four digits in which two are decimals at most. And uh, if I print this out, so if I print f interpolator, then uh, we would see the approximate value of pi as 3.14. So these are the standard interpolators that ship with any Scala distribution. Now, if you've worked with any Scala libraries and tools, you might have noticed other expressions that look like interpolators. For example, I have Spark already uh, created here in my project. And uh, if I create a 
spark session as spark session builder getter create. I'm not actually going to use it, but I'm going to show you how the a custom interpolator looks like. And I'm going to import spark.implicits. I can actually create a column of a data frame by doing a dollar sign and then a quote. So dollar quote, and then I can put a column name here. So when you create dollar quote column name, this is actually a spark column object. So this is actually pretty important because the dollar interpolator is not shipped with Scala by default, but the Spark library allows us to do that. There are also examples in other libraries, for example, in uh, SQL-like uh, accessors. For example, you could say SQL quote, and then you would put in some SQL statement. Now the SQL um, interpolator is not available because I don't have a slick library uh, inserted into my project, but you get the picture. So several libraries have imported custom interpolators. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a custom interpolator. So a custom interpolator will allow you to write very powerful and very succinct code that will seem part of the language itself. So um, here's the scenario. I'm going to assume that you say, for example, I'm going to have a case class, let's name this person with a name as a string and an age as an int. And you use this class quite a lot. And uh, you are parsing instances of this person class from strings in the form of name comma age. So this kind of like CSV and you parse that to person. Normally you would write a method like from string to person and uh, you would pass in some argument in the form of a string like line as a string and you would return a person and you would create tokens as line split by comma and then you would create a person with token zero and tokens one dot two int for example if the line satisfies this format then this parsing will go without any issues so this code is straightforward so this would be the normal approach now, I'm going to teach you how you could create a person interpolator so that you can simply write person quote, and then you could pass in a name like Bob and the age 35, something like that. And I'm going to teach you how to make such a thing available to you. So uh, I'm going to write the following. A custom interpolator needs two things. It needs an implicit wrapper over a special class called string context and a method whose name is identical to the interpolator you want to create. So for person, you would create something like implicit class, and I'm going to name this person interpolator. The name of this implicit class doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that this person interpolator takes as argument a string context. So a string context is a very special type that is available to the compiler when you do something like this, when you inject values or expressions inside a string. And inside, you would create a method called person that takes as arguments something like args of type any star. So this method signature is important. Now the return type is not important it's important for your meaning, for your purpose. So in our case, we want to return a person instance. And uh, you would create your logic inside. I'm going to leave this blank because once you write something like this, you would be able to create a val, let's call this Bob, as person quote with Bob and 34. So now the person interpolator is available to you. So this is the structure that you need to create a custom interpolator. Now, how do we implement the logic inside? How do we actually make this work? Now, let me explain where this method signature actually comes from. The argument list is very important. And the args needs to be any star. Any because these args that you pass into the person interpolator are the expressions that you inject in the string. So these two, for example, are the args that the S interpolator will receive. Now the other pieces of the string, the things in between the args, are called parts, and the parts are available from the string context. 
sc.parts. So the parts are the things in between the args. And the args are of type any because you can inject any kind of expression inside these curly braces or any kind of values by expansion with the dollar sign. So that's why the args are of type any. And uh, we have a star here because this is a var arg method because in an interpolated string you can pass as many values here. You can uh, expand as many values or expressions as you like. So this is why the person method here needs to have args of type any star. Now the return type doesn't matter for the interpolator, it only matters for what you want to achieve. In our case we want to create a person instance. And our job right now is to concatenate all these parts with all these args and then do the natural parsing. Now in particular I'm going to call the string context's s method. So I'm going to create the total string as sc.s with the args as a var arg argument to this method. And then I'm going to parse this total string by copying this logic shamelessly. And instead of line, I'm going to use total string. Now, total string is obtained by calling the s method from the string context. Now the s method concatenates all the parts with all the args in the right order. So exactly as it is right here for the s interpolator, we have the first part with the first arg, then the second part with the second arg, and so on and so forth, until we get the total expanded string. So this will be the total expanded string, which is what we want. And at the end, we return a person obtained by splitting that total string by the comma and parsing out its tokens. So uh, we can actually use this particular instance of Bob as a person. So if I print line Bob, then I should see person with the name Bob and the age 34. So if I run this application again, you will see here person with the name Bob and age 34. So this is an instance of person. Now, because we are using the args here into the total expanded string, we can actually inject values inside here as well. So if I define a value called, let's call this name as Bob and age as 34, I can actually inject the name inside and the age inside as well. And uh, this s method will take care to expand the name and age inside the string and then parse the entire string at the very end. So if I run this application again, I should still see Bob with 34, as you see here. So notice how easy it was for us to create a custom interpolator that seems like part of the language. This is particularly useful if you're creating your own libraries. All right, so I hope this was useful. Check out the written form of this video at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog and click the like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so leave your feedback in the comments below. I read every single one. And in the meantime, follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn for updates related to upcoming material. In the meantime, I'm Daniel. Thank you for listening.